You know my first guest tonight from Boardwalk Empire, Nocturnal Animals, and The Shape of Water. He now stars in the new miniseries Waco. Please welcome Michael Shannon. <laughs> It's so nice of them not to act like they feel that they've been robbed. <laughs> well, oh, well, by, by, because by it's you? Because it's me. Why wouldn't they want... You're an Oscar nominee. Why wouldn't they be excited? <laughs> wow. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you, you reeled that fish in and then you milked it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, listen, nice to have you on. I got Thank to meet you. you this afternoon when we were, when we were working on a, a, a very special PSA that we'll be showing tomorrow night. I'm very excited about Important it. work. Very important work. Yep. And um, thank you for helping me raise awareness. We'll get to that later. No now, problem. Um, uh, I'm also a big fan of yours. I mean, obviously, for Boardwalk Empire and for Man of Steel, Midnight Special, you're fantastic in that. Oh, thank and, you, uh, Steve. That's, uh, in, that, in, that, in that movie, you uh, are a member of a cult. Mm. Yeah. A cultish, like, uh, you know... A kind of uh, divi a divided and separated uh, sect. Now you're in uh, the new uh, uh, series, a limited series called Waco, on the Paramount Network, which used to be Spike, and um, and it's about Waco. It's about the uh, tragedy that happened at the standoff between uh, the FBI and David Koresh at Waco. Yeah. I was going to ask, but I know it's not. I was going to ask if you played David Koresh. <laughs> That's what everybody asks. Yeah. Why do you think they ask you that, Michael Shannon? Because <laughs> I have such long, curly hair. I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. I guess they assume. But I think David is, was a little bit uh, younger than me. But honestly, David is a very uh, uh, charming and fascinating individual. Well, to um, be a leader of a cult, you sort of have to be charming. Yeah, and yeah. You can't you? just be like grumpy and like, get over here. It's time for prayers. Here's your porridge. Go to bed. No, it's got to be a little something more than that. So who do you play in this? Uh, I play uh, Gary Nessner, who is a wonderful, wonderful human being who uh, was the head negotiator for the FBI for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, he has a wonderful book called, uh, I believe it's called Stalling for Time, that documents uh, a number of cases that he worked on over the years. But... Uh, Waco was obviously the most notable. Now, my understanding is that he actually didn't... He was not there for negotiating the entire time. Uh, no. Uh, th th there's a team of negotiators, and he, he trains them. He oversees the division. Uh, but, you know, it's, a, it's an exhausting and uh, can be a somewhat tedious job. Uh, there's a lot of waiting around. And, um, Did he establish a relationship? Is that part of the negotiator's job, establish a relationship with someone like Koresh? Yes, you want to uh, establish a rapport and gain some sort of trust. Uh, it's difficult because there's the negotiating branch, and then there's also a, a tactical branch, and then there's leadership that can side with uh, either branch, uh, depending on how they feel it's going. And, so sometimes you get put in a position as a negotiator where you say something's going to happen and then it doesn't. And, uh, and that obviously becomes very frustrating for the people you're negotiating with. You now, the, the, obviously, everybody remembers the Waco ended in tragedy. Um, I believe we have a clip here um, where uh, your character is talking to Koresh. W what has just happened? What, what well, are we this, is, this is the very uh, outset of the negotiations. Um, it's the first time that Gary is talking to David on the phone, and Gary is very quickly trying to figure out what will appease David and, and help get these people out safely. All right, let's take a look, Jim. Hi, David. This is Gary, FBI. Hey, Gary. How you doing? Mm, you know, I suppose we both had better days. Yeah. You're telling me. Yeah. How do you say your name, David? Is it... Koresh or Koresh? You ever hear someone die before, Gary? Unfortunately, yes, I have. Then you say my name like the last breath of a dying man, like a death nail. Koresh.
That's not, that's not ketchup on his shirt. He, he had been shot. He'd already been shot before yes. the standoff started. Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. yes. No, you started off as an actor in Chicago, and so did I. I, 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 I I'm guessing that you're a little bit younger than I, I am. That's why we didn't overlap. No, but I did see you. Uh, the first time I ever laid eyes on you was in a in a play at a a, a, a you store saw me front in a play. theater. Yes, I did. It was a play called Schumacher, uh, directed by a dear friend of mine, Dexter Bullard. Dear friend of mine too, Dexter yeah. Bullard. Dexter yeah, yeah. Bullard, bright as a shiny new dime. He really is. He really is. That's amazing. No one saw that play because there were only like 20 seats in the house. We did it in a, a like a kind of a storefront theater where you paint the window of an old like storefront black and put mattresses up there, which a lot exactly. of little Chicago shows were. Yeah, and it, it, there's something very magical about that. I mean, you know, it's it's obviously it's nice to get to a point where. Uh, People are actually paying you to act, and uh, yeah. you know people are seeing you do it. How long did that it, take but... for you? How long did you struggle in the fields of the Lord before <laughs> before anybody said we're going to cut a check for you to do that? Uh, yeah, it was a few years. It was a few years for sure. Did uh, you? What did you do to get by? <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> I did a variety of things. Uh, I uh, I worked at a, a pet store. I worked at a bagel place, a bookstore, but. I think one of my most lucrative gigs uh, was uh, uh, playing bongos on the subway. Wow. I mean, yeah, yeah. I socked away yeah, quite a bit of cash doing that. Really? Did they pay you to stop? <laughs> <laughs> because that could get loud. Were you a good bongo player? No. No, not at all. But, <laughs> but the thing is, I, I played in this uh, tunnel. In the, OK, so there's the red line and the blue line in sure. Chicago. And there's a tunnel that connects them. And it has great uh, reverb. So yeah. it disguises the fact that you don't have any rhythm whatsoever. <laughs> you just kind of pound on them and just it's a very a soothing, or I thought it was soothing. Mm -hmm. So how much would you make? How much would you make in like in a day of playing the bongos? I think my biggest day was five bucks. <laughs> wow. That was, a, that was a pity day. That was five bucks of pity. Yes. Yes. But um, I spent it very wisely. Yes. <laughs> I did this thing. I busked also. I had some friends. We were on Northwestern. Some oh, friends really? of mine and I busked together. We did terrible mime. You did mime? Terrible mime. Terrible mime. Even worse than your bongo playing, I'm get. I bet. A we bongo would have improved our mime. We should have hooked up. Yeah. That would have been killer. Seven dollars. Seven dollars? Seven dollars. Yeah. Enough to go, like, go get a beer, go to, uh, like, the Hare Krishnas and let them read the Bhagavad Gita <laughs> to you while you eat the free chickpea salad. <laughs> Because you'll do anything. You'll do anything right. as a young actor just to survive. What were some of your schemes, your mime, uh, you know, scenarios? Do you know, like, pin and magnet exercises where you stand in neutral position and then one, you're the pin and someone else is a magnet and, you, and they basically make you, they, like, they put you in different positions like that? And one guy, you'd, we'd, me and another girl would be facing each other and another man would come by and they would, he would move us, like, joint by joint and tell stories. Like, we, he would, like, make us kiss or, like, dance or something like that, but it took forever. My favorite thing is that people would take photographs of us while we were standing perfectly still, and I can only imagine them going home and going, you can't tell from this photograph, but they're perfectly still. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Capturing... Capturing the magic. No, I have you speaking of uh, magic and perfectly still uh, as a as a as a star people ask you for selfies all the time Selfies, yes. and you've become famous for your great your great stone face. This is the face you give people. Yeah For selfies. Well, I want it to look like we're friends, you know, <laughs> like we've known each other a long time Old buds. Oh, really? Oh. Give me the give me the friend face. I can't okay. do it now. I'm, too, ha I'm well, too happy. You're too happy? Okay. Yes. Okay. I got to imagine Guillermo del Toro saying, now show me friendly. <laughs> How do you respond? Because uh, people come up to me all the time uh, to, for selfies, and you want to be nice. Like, I, do, you, do, you, do you like that? Or you, you encourage that? What do you? I, I, I prefer having a, a brief conversation with somebody as opposed... You know, a lot of times people, they, they just run up and the first thing out of their mouth is, uh, can I get a picture with you? Like, they don't even say hello or hi or, you know, right. whatever. And, um, and well, you know, I, I get they're excited or whatever. But the thing is, is like back in the old days, if you really wanted a picture, you would actually have to have a camera. And you would have to, it'd have to be like hanging around your neck. And if, if I saw that, I'd be like, I would have some, this person's lugging this camera around with them everywhere. <laughs> 
of course I'll take a picture with you. But now everybody's got these phones. They take pictures of everything. I mean, they take, I, I, I have this bad habit when I'm on the subway of looking at what other people are doing on their phones. Yeah. It's truly horrifying. I mean, what people are doing on their phones. I've seen some of the most ridiculous stuff. And, um, and the other thing I don't like is, is someone will be like, oh, I've got to show you this picture. I've got the greatest picture. And they go on their phone and they have like, 5,000 pictures in their phone, and they're like, it's so good, you're gonna really, it's gonna be worth it. Just wait. Oh my God, I'd never forget when I took this picture. It was like, so funny, and, um, and uh, it was so like, it was the best time. Well, anyway, it was great. You had to be, and then you never actually see the picture. So I don't wanna be that picture on somebody's phone. We're like, I met Michael Shannon, it was incredible. He's, I asked him if he would take a picture with me, and he said, yes. No, that's not him. That's somebody else. Uh, I just don't want to be that person. Yeah. I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. Could I get a, could I get a selfie with you, Michael It's you. you. It's, yeah, yeah. For old times' sake. OK. All right. Let's do it right do, do you want a friendly face? I want the Michael Shannon face. OK. Oh, yeah. Flip that bad boy around. What, what are you doing here? Uh, OK, we'll look friend, little friends here. Beautiful. Great. Michael Great. Shannon. Waco airs Wednesdays on Paramount Network. Michael Shannon, everybody, we'll be right back with Megan McCain.